to the July 21st meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair acknowledges the assistance and continued support of our entire staff, Jen, Kevin, Melissa, Mark, Amy, and Su oh, I can't say Susan. All right. Uh, tonight we're short a couple of commissioners, but we still have a quorum, so we are good. And I'll remind you for commenting or calling each of you at the appropriate time and voting is roll call votes. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function at the appropriate time. They will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are located on the agenda. Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 regarding COVID-19 now allows for full, full public participation. Therefore, if you'd like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled. Be succinct and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes. First up, I don't think we have minutes to vote, correct? Correct. All right, moving on. Request for a continuance under a notice of intent. Byron, Ms. Seth, and Susan Keller, 72 Pheasant Lane, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to expand and alter an existing licensed fixed pier and ramp. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until September 1st. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until September 1st. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until 9 1. Courtney's in now. Mr. Bird Next has one. joined the party. Next up are requests for determination of applicability. First up, Samuel Lacey and Kathleen Wallace. 31 Emerson Road, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a nine by 15 foot addition. Jen, did yes. I see Alyssa come in? She did, but she wanted to be moved back to attendees. Um, All right. She likes to be in the background. Um, okay. And Kevin's Hi, on Alyssa. vacation, this, so I'm doing double duty. Uh, Thankfully, it's a short meeting. Um, staff is recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. Heard so moved. All right, I heard the motion. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Mr. Chairman, um, the applicant asked a question. Um, they don't oh, know understand, they don't understand what the negative means. Uh, Ms. Wallace, if you can hear me, the negative determinations means that you can actually proceed with your project. Um, it's a little backwards in the RDA world. So when you hear a negative, it means you actually can proceed. She says, excellent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I should add that to my spiel, shouldn't I? Yeah. A yes is no. No yeah. no is yes. Yeah, there we go. Well, it, it's really not negative. It just means you don't have to go to the next level. Correct. All right. 
Uh, next up, Elizabeth O'Sullivan, 67 Moon Penny Lane, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct a 14 foot by 12 foot screened in porch within the exist, existing footprint of a deck. <clears throat> Mrs. Lincoln. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, staff is recommending a negative two under the state and negative three under the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. Bird, so move. All second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Blood filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Madam, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Lenore Freitas, 150 Birch Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove an existing deck, dining room, and screen and sunroom, and to construct a new deck, front porch, and screened in porch. Mr. Chairman, um, we were waiting on um, a letter from a structural engineer because they are proposing a second floor on this house. It's on the plan. We usually require that information. Um, we have not received that yet. Tom Bunker is in the um, attendees. May I promote him to a panelist? Maybe he can explain. They're waiting on a letter from the, the builder. Yes, please. Thank you, Tom. I'm promoting you to a panelist. Hello, Mr. Bunker. Hello, good evening. Yeah, um, I talked with Jen earlier this afternoon and I was uh, getting that letter from the structural was something that had escaped me on this project. So the, uh, the uh, owner and Longfellow were working on getting the letter. Um, I haven't received it yet, and I suggest we can send it directly to Jen's email also, but uh, she hasn't gotten it either. So, uh, um, you know, if you ever could, could let it go without the letter, of course, you'd appreciate it. But if you need the letter, I understand. Uh, and then we'd have to uh, take it up uh, at your next hearing in August 4th, I guess. We, we think you're asking for a continuance, Tom. If, if that's... If that's the protocol, I'll ask for a continuance. My I, August fourth. I yes. just have a quick question. Uh, is this project in a flood zone, or is it in the resource area strictly? Flood zone. Uh, flood zone. Flood zone. Okay. At the request of the applicant, I make a motion to continue this till August fourth. Bird second. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this until August 4th. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. This is continued until 8 4. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Next up, Marine Biological Laboratory, 33 Barneck Road, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission to resurface an existing grass parking lot with gravel and to install a drainage trench. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I will first read our recommendation or recommendations of negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed um but there was something that was submitted i did send it to all of you there was something submitted that um, the um, resident wanted it read into the record so um may i proceed or do you want to put a motion on the table first i'll put a motion on the table to accept staff's recommendation I'll second it. Okay. Okay. And this is, um, I ask that my comments be given to the commission and entered into the record for this evening hearing. 
is from Catherine Bumpus. I was very surprised to see the MBL application for Barnock Road was being reviewed as an RDA stating it was an existing parking lot, both because it seems to reach the threshold of a notice of intent review and because its use is mischaracterized. While the grass lot has been used for parking, my understanding that it was only supposed to be used for temporary short-term and special event parking. While the lot was once built on, it has been open and grass since the Breakwater Hotel was torn down in 1961. To replace the grass with biologically sterile gravel with no ecological value does a disservice to the local environment and no matter what is what its use going forward. Um, so, so Jen, I'd like you to I'd like you to read the rest of the staff report, which explains that it's just in the flood zone and only a little part of this parking lot is in the B buffer zone. So um, yeah, so I wrote that staff report, and of course I don't have a copy of it myself, but just the long and short of it, there's 40 parking spaces. Um, it was called, they were down there. Um, working, we were called, just a brief history of how this came before the board. Um, we got a call of concern from a resident in Woods Hole. We went down there. They were very um, cooperative and responsive. Um, immediately reached out to Homes and McGrath, MBL did, once we stopped the work and they produced a plan. It's for 40 gravel parking spaces with a drainage trench at the far end on the other side of the lot. Um, it's in flood zone, it's in the outer buffer zone, a uh, small portion of it, I think only one parking space is in the outer buffer zone to the coastal bank, um, but it doesn't require mitigation because the entire zone A buffer zone to the coastal bank is vegetated. Is that what you were looking for, Betsy? That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay. So that's why the staff's recommendation was the negative. All right, any other comments? All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, continued requests for determination of applicability. First up, John D'Angelo, number two, Pine Grove Avenue, East Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to construct a new single family dwelling with attached two car garage and to install a Title V septic system with all associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. Yes, Mr. Chairman, staff is recommending a negative two under the state and the bylaw with the resource area boundaries not confirmed. Okay. So moved, Gladfelter. Bird second. Just in flood zone? Yes. Thank it you. was continued because there was fill being brought onto the site and I wanted to go out myself and see how the grade changes were going out. I didn't want um, the the proposed fill to impact any adjacent property. So I wanted the chance to meet uh, Mr. Borselli out there myself. Thank you for that. Anything other, any other comments? All right. We have a motion of a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up are requests for a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up is 72 Pheasant Lane has already been continued, 291. Next up, Greg Clancy, Clancy Construction, 71 Alder Lane, North Falmouth, Mass. For permission to expand an existing garage, remove and replace five native trees, and for all associated excavation. Yes, then, Mr. Chairman, this uh, the applicant's representative is requesting a continuance until August fourth. 
Gladfelter so moved. Berg second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the table to continue this hearing until August 4th. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until August 4th. Next up are continued hearings under a notice of intent. First up, Robert B. and Elaine M. Bailey, trustees, the Elaine M. Bailey 2013 Revocable Trust, 132 Little Neck Bars Road, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct invasive species management, install restoration plantings, and to construct a patio front walkway and increase the size of the driveway. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the applicant is requesting another continuance until August 4th. Um, this is being the, the primary um, consultant on this is Crawford, uh, Jen Crawford from Crawford Ecological. Um, and we all know that Ms. Crawford recently had a baby, so they've just been kind of behind. She did email us today and say that she has made progress on the plan and she was hoping to, um, sorry, let me find it. Two weeks, she is, she has her, the revisions down and she's so hoping to submit something next week. So August 4th. Bird, so moved. Glad Helter, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this yet again until August 4th. Betsy. Glad Helter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. I'm aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this hearing until August 4th. Next up, Christina C. and Matthew P. O'Connor, trustees. Christina C. O'Connor Trust, 37 Fells Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to demolish the existing single family dwelling and to construct a new single family dwelling with an attached garage, deck, deck, retaining walls and rent station to install a new Title V sewage disposal system, to reconfigure the driveway, to install utilities, and for all associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. And I see Chairman, Nate in the house. I, yep, I promoted uh, Nate Garsgarian up from Holmes and McGrath to um, further present the project. We did receive word from Natural Heritage. We were waiting on their comment letter, but um, Holmes and McGrath did hear from Natural Heritage that um, returned their application and their filing fee because they felt that their review was not necessary because the majority of the project was outside of their jurisdiction. So. Well, that never happened. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> wow. But I'd like to receive credit for that. <laughs> so we're, well, exactly. I don't think there was much else. We're ready to close, right? We I'll are. Hey, do you have anything you want to add? Nice to see everybody. Excellent. Good to Perfect see you too. input. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any comments from any commissioners? I have a comment. Nat, this is exactly how we want projects to go. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling is Keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Are there any public comments, Jim? No public comments in the chat. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Betsy. Glad felt her eye. Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Not It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, Nate. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank I'm sorry, you. Nate. Do you go Nate or Nat? Uh, Nate. 
I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Damn, I'm starting yeah, to get it right. You, yeah, I appreciate it. Do you get you a minimum start. overtime? Yeah. <laughs> the same as you, buddy. Incrementally by three minutes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, just a quick thing. Kit O'Connor says thank you to everyone. It was in the chat. You're Came welcome. In the Excellent. Good night, Nate. Good night. Trying to remove you now. There you go. Okay. Don't take it personal. Next up, vote order of conditions. First up, Manuel and Ann Gonzalez, trustees. 223 Edgewater Drive Realty Trust, 223 Edgewater Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. One second, Mr. Chairman. Um, we closed this, what, this was last week, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so. The sheet pile. Yeah, um, um, I mean, just. The staff does have concern with the sheet piling. I mean, you know, we have to, the board, um, there's only, I think, I think they showed a picture with like three or four just little railroad ties holding that up. Staff feels that you could probably plant that with um, some high tide bush or um, uh, something similar to kind of anchor in that bank as opposed to putting the sheet that sheet wall because the sheet piling wall is only going to be maybe a foot or two um, above above grade. Um, so we did have some concerns with that. Um, the planting plan, if you give me one second, I'll pull it up. Um, here it is. Um, I mean, we do need to know, I mean, um, with the planting plan, they are removing the, the invasives, so they are going to the, it should be a special condition that they identified who they're going to be using as a licensed herbicide applicator. Um, that, that was a, a technical comment from DEP and the, the staff also has concerns with whoever's gonna be applying the herbicide in that really sensitive area. Um, and then coming up with a more definitive replanting plan, although, uh, where is it? Proposed restoration plantings. I mean, some of the species they um, did propose, um, the staff doesn't feel is are very appropriate, at least two of them for that environment. So I'd like to change up the, I wouldn't put the arrowwood or the wild raisin that close to the shoreline. Um, the winter berry should be okay. But again, that's, winter berry can get pretty big and I'm not quite sure it, it's a great, for that very small area of coastal bank restoration, I, I'm not quite sure it would be the most appropriate plant. Um, but we can come up with some more um, plans. Did they not agree to work with staff on that, though? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was well, Tim. Yeah. Um, and I can, I can work with Tim on that. I'm just afraid, like, the, the winterberry can get really big, and then, you know, they'll, they, they, they'll start to be cut. Um, it, it does well in a coastal environment, um, but that's just an awfully small bank for that kind of plant. Can um, we put that on the findings? Yep, I can. Okay. Perfect. And then, um, I think, um, they did, they did supply the plan that shows the V zone. So that was submitted, um, Peter's nodding his head, yep, that, they did submit that plan, um, that shows the V zone, um, on that little, um, kind of deck area that they want to enclose. So a portion of that does fall within that V zone area. Um, and I think that's about it on our end. Jen? Uh, hang on, Bless or Beeberry, Marsh Elder Restoration. Oh yeah, all the our Marsh Elders are not to be trimmed. So the restoration plantings that are um, closer to the marsh should not be trimmed. 
Yes, Betsy. I think you should make a finding that the house and the boathouse are tied together with a tunnel. With an existing foundation. Right. And the other question, the other question I have is, um, with this sheet piling, how, how, if, how deep will it be driven in? They say eight foot long shore guard, if anybody what? knows what that is, driven at least five feet below grade. Oh, five feet so below? They, yeah, so they have it about, if I scale it off right now. So eight feet width and five foot depth. Uh, so right now they have it around shown they have it around a foot and a half above grade. Like and, but it's eight feet wide? No, eight no. foot, eight foot, it says eight foot long shore guard, driven at least five feet below grade. So I don't know if that eight feet means it's eight feet wide. No, or it's eight feet tall. Or if it's eight feet tall and they're driving it to a depth of five feet. Right. So which presumably leaves three feet above grade. Well, they say at least five feet. And the way it's drawn, it's only a foot and a half above grade. It's I'm just uh, you know, it's when do when does the commission consider a retaining wall or a coast you know a retaining wall an actual retaining wall did like is it two railroad ties is it three so that's why the staff was just a little concerned with the with the use of this to replace what's out there um but that's something the board can can discuss and decide i have a question so just to, just to clarify the last statement the eight foot long short short guard is a is a is a product name Product. So eight foot long. So they're saying they're going to use eight foot long pieces and they'll be driven at least five feet. So if they're only going to be a foot and a half above grade, they'd be cutting it by six inches. So as far as the retaining wall goes, I mean, if we don't have a definition that says what a retaining wall is, I don't know how we can come up with it now. I mean, one tie technically retains, right? Correct. So that's why I'm saying maybe it's something we can think about in the future. Yeah. So is there? I mean, you know, something like this is certainly better than landscape ties. You know, for the purpose. Correct. Betsy. So, are there railroad ties all the way across the lot? Um. Some of them are rotted. I know, well, I know there are ties to walk down because you could walk down to the shore, but I don't remember seeing them to the right and left of, of that set of railroad ties that went down. They ended up showing a picture. Um, hang on. Edgewater Drive. This is west, right? Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I just got something on my computer that says my um, internet's unstable, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with my computer today. Oh, uh, I was talking about the operator. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. I mean, the question really is, is that, is, is this, um, if this retaining wall goes in, it's driven into the ground, which is going to be less in base than building a wall and digging a footing and pouring it and so forth. Um, and the end product is only sitting up a foot or so. Um, what are the real concerns we have with that? Well, I think part of it is the precedent as to as to what can replace what kind of barrier can replace 
the wall. You have your wall, you have soft solutions. This is not a soft solution. This is a hard solution. But this is a hard solution replacing a hard solution. Yeah, but my question is, does that railroad tie go across the entire lot? Or is it just a railroad tie that's the last set of ties down where there's a walkway? Okay, Betsy, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. okay. So this is looking, obviously, here's the dock down here. Oh, that, answers my, down. that answers my question, I can see yeah, it. But I'm not, I don't have that same shot on the other side. So what I thank you, if the board is willing or, or is willing to um, allow the sheet piling, what I would say is you should probably condition it to allow the sheet piling only where there is this, no, only where, the, not where the only retaining wall is? Yes, that's what I would like you to have put down. Why is you put up sheet pile that? at three quarters of the way. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Well, there's a dock that. there. There's a dock that's involved. Okay. I see the picture again. Yeah. Um, hang on. I'm sharing. It's precedent, I'm sharing. Jamie. Okay, so they're talking about putting sheet piling in from the stairs over, over to the foundation, is that what And maybe to the right of the stairs, if there's, if there's a timber yeah, there. The problem is, is that the, the staff, like we couldn't, it's very overgrown, so I can't conclusively say if there's sheet piling there, but I would just say put the sheet piling where there is the, the, the existing um, timber, they call them re timber retaining walls. And okay, I, I'm, I'm buying into this and I'll tell you why. If you look on the plan, it says, if I may, proposed vinyl sheet, sheeting wall to replace existing timber walls, 35 linear feet. So that does not, Perfect. they're not requesting to go lot line to lot line. Perfect. So, so I'm okay requesting with Requesting it, with yeah. Sheet. You're requesting it from the boathouse to the dock. Okay, I'm good with it. Okay. Move we accept uh, the order conditions as discussed. Wait a minute. So I'm going to do herbicide applicator work with the work with plantings, um, a finding that the boathouse and the, the the house are structurally tied together, um, and then the 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 sheet piling to replace 35 linear feet of timber retaining wall. Correct. And also, could you uh, have it listed as remove the mystery pipe? I believe he already has removed the mystery pipe. He came into the office a day or two after. Wait, I was off in the last okay. Friday, so... I believe he came into the office Thursday and told me that they found the mystery pipe and removed it. Did they find out what the source was? It's a drainage from the house, the original house. Okay. Um, just for the record, that the finding you just said about the foundation connecting the boathouse and the, and the house proper, that's going to come up in the building department. So our acceptance doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get a building permit. And okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying they won't. I'm just saying that there's you know there's two different jurisdictions here. There's ours, and then there's building. Correct. Okay. Just again, just so it's said. All right. So we have I'll put a motion. a motion on the table. So we need a second. I'll second it. Glad Pelter. All right. Anybody have anything else? All right. Betsy. Glad Pelter, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Thank you.
We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, BH Seacrest Property LLC, 350 Quaker Road, North Falmouth, Mass. Um, this was the uh, beach maintenance. They've submitted the revised plans with the revised um, notes. It's going to be the same, basically, set of special conditions that the board applies to basically every other beach maintenance. They're not allowed to remove the cobble from the beach, um, leave 10% of the rack, can't change the form and volume of the beach. They took out the, the alternate access um, areas, so they pretty much did what the commission asked. Perfect. So I'll move to accept the order as discussed. I'll second. All right. Anybody have anything else? All right. We're keeping Steve up. We need to move along. We have a motion and a second to issue the order conditions as discussed. Betsy. Gladfeld, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Right. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. <clears throat> Next up, Daniel J. and Nancy F. Trodden, 20 Cove Street, East Falmouth, Mass. Yes, Mr. Chairman, they've removed the patio from the plan. Um, the existing paved driveway next to the um, the resource area is going to be the, the shelf now. They removed the patio, so it's just the proposed deck and proposed addition. Um, and replacing the trees and adding a small amount of mitigation in the corner. And I have a note they're going to work with you on the cedar placement. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Bird will make a motion to uh, uh, accept the order as discussed. Walsh, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions as discussed. Betsy. Black filter aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. <clears throat> Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Patton, aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Oh, no, where did the agenda go? We have one more. One more. Next up, Stephen Doyle, Black Beach Harbor Head Association, Black Beach Hills Road, Little Neck Bars Road, Gilbert Lane, and Drift Road, West Falmouth, Mass. This is basically the regrading of the road and the reestablishment of the drainage swales. The order is just going to mirror the, the order we issued years ago for this project, um, and we were going to cite their um, stormwater operation and maintenance plan. Anybody have anything special in there? All right. What are you thinking? I'll, I'll make a motion um, to, to accept this discussed. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. Mm -hmm. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. A reminder, we are not meeting next week. Done. And last motion. I'll move to adjourn. All second. second. All right. Anybody have anything else? Gladfelter, well, aye. Wait a minute. Pace yourself. <laughs> All right, Courtney. Bird, aye. 
Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien eye. Peter. Walsh eye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Good Justin. Night, guys. Thanks, the recording. Guys.